Hi, are you looking to get into data science but don't have a master's in computer science or statistics? Or maybe you're wanting a career change and hoping to break into the industry. Or maybe you're a student wanting to land your first data science role. Well then you're in the right place. Let's waste no time and get straight into the video. Hey everyone, my name is Vivian and I am back with another video, this time on a beginner's guide into data science. If you're new here, I post content on data science, career, and lifestyle. So if that's up your alley, please like and subscribe. It would really mean a lot. So recently, I've received a few questions on how to break into the data science industry. So today's video will hopefully be a practical guide and give you guys some kind of direction and suggestions. Um, I know that most of you are from very different backgrounds, so I'm gonna leave timestamps down below. So feel free to skip through this video to whichever section is most relevant to you. So the first thing that I want to cover off is your accreditation and your degree. So do you really need a degree in a related field? And furthermore, do you need a master's or postgrad degree on top? Um, I do believe that having a postgrad degree in you know, a relevant field such as computer science, stats or data science would really help your application when a hiring manager is reviewing it. However, it is definitely not a hard requirement. I know that it might seem like it with a lot of jobs, you know, wanting PhDs or master degrees for even like the most junior data science roles, and it might seem really demotivating. However, please don't let that stop you from putting through your application. I am a firm believer that your degree is not a direct representation of your success. In fact, I know some people with PhDs who are just way too technically minded and don't even end up surviving on the role. On the other hand, I know some excellent data scientists who come from a completely non-technical background and some have no degree at all, but they're still doing super, super well. Having a degree, yes, is a more traditional pathway and probably will make you more easily employable as hiring managers are so used to going through your resume, your cover letter, your academic transcript when reviewing an application. Um, I do believe that uni also provides you with a particular structured way of thinking and probably some more critical thinking skills which are all really really valuable and particularly in a STEM degree your academic transcript and your marks are a measure of your intelligence to some extent. However with the increase in non-standard education pathways for a fraction of the price for example online courses or boot camps like General Assembly, Coursera, Datacamp, the future of work would not be about your degree but more so about your skills. My uni degree taught me a lot of theoretical concepts, but it is impossible in an everyday job that you'll be asked you know, to prove some kind of convergence theorem. It's all about how you apply these skills. And one more thing that I want to add is that domain and industry knowledge are so important in data science and you rarely learn this at uni. So this leads me into my next point. What courses should you be studying and what skills do you need to become a data scientist? So I'm going to break this down into around six or seven main areas, which I think you guys should focus on and in order of priority as well. So the first one is your mathematical and statistical knowledge. So I'm not saying that you guys need to go out there and do a degree in maths and stats. I think that it's completely fine if you just know your basic statistical concepts as this will help you, you know, interpret your results and interpret any kind of findings. So as an example, under stats, I would probably look into your high level descriptive stats, you know, distribution, sampling, hypothesis testing, A-B testing, just so you know, you're able to design an experiment and at least explain the underlying concepts or any kind of modeling technique. Um, you're probably going to be asked some kind of statistical knowledge in your general interview process for a data science job, so keep that in mind. I would also, you know, understand your linear algebra, your basic matrix multiplication is probably enough, as a lot of, you know, neural networks and advanced modeling techniques use these as an underlying foundation. I know that a lot of modeling techniques these days can be done by a one-liner of code. However, I think it's really important that you guys understand what's happening in the back end, rather than just, you know, blindly applying a XGBoost piece of code without really understanding anything else. Um, I find that having learned maths and stats also gives you a really critical way into approaching any kind of problem and gives you a very analytical thinking mindset which is really valuable in a data science career. I would also understand how databases work and learn SQL because that is our main way of querying and extracting you know, quick results from databases. I would also learn one programming language out of either R or Python. You can pick either one. Um, this will help you, you know, do your modeling, do your implementation of the models, and set up monitoring reports. Um, you can do, you can learn both if you want, but I would recommend just picking one and being really good at it rather than being mediocre at both. 
The next one is pretty obvious and this is Excel and don't underestimate Excel. I know so many data scientists who are like brilliant at coding like in R and Python. However, they don't know how to use Excel, which really baffles me because I feel like Microsoft Excel is one of those basic things that everyone should just need to know. Um, in terms of what to focus on, I would, you know, do your pivot tables, the VLOOKUPs and the index matches. I think those are the main three functions in Excel that I use pretty heavily. And also just understand the difference between, you know, a CSV file and an Excel workbook. Just because you're going to be doing a whole bunch of data deliveries which require delivery in different formats. So make sure you are familiar with different Excel formats as well. Um, the next one here is Linux. Um, I would say that I know so many data scientists who are unfamiliar with the command line and myself included, but I'm working on that. Um, I think it's super important in computer science to have this knowledge, but because data science overlaps so heavily with programming, I would definitely recommend you guys read up on it or at least know the basic commands like, you know, how to change your directory, how to navigate from here to there. Um, I would also be familiar with Git and Bitbucket as a lot of the times we're working on the same piece of code with many other data scientists who create different commits and you wouldn't want to overwrite each other's work. The next skill is your visualization skills. So this really depends on your company. So you can either learn, you know, Tableau, Alteryx, Power BI dashboards. I would say those are the three main visualizations. And last but not least, I would say communication is a very, very big factor here. So even if you're brilliant, but you cannot communicate, I would think that it's really hard to be successful. Um, so much of our job is involving technical concepts to non-technical people. So it is really important that we are able to communicate this to the business. So the next question is, now that I've got these skills, how do I practice my skills? So this is gonna differ depending on what stage of your career you're at. But if you're still studying, I would say that the best way would be to get an internship where you can use these newly acquired data science skills to sort of practice and like apply them in a real world environment and solve real life business problems. So I've got a video up on my channel for interview advice for uni students. So feel free to check that out. And if you're interested in more of a data science interview process, I've also got a video on that as well. Now, if you're currently a STEM student studying a technical degree, it is very likely that you're going to have projects during the course of your uni. So this is another way to practice the skills and it is probably the most representative of what a real world business situation would look like because you're always going to have to work with cross-functional teams across the business coming together to solve one problem. So as an example, when I was at uni studying my statistics degree, we had a joint project where we had to work with some members of the nutrition division. If your degree doesn't offer the ability for you to do a project, I would also reach out to professors, see if you can take up additional credit and do a research project. If you need to join any hackathons during uni, maybe even some consulting clubs or data societies where you get to show some kind of like initiative and try lead a project. So if you didn't go to uni or have a quantitative degree, your best option is a Kaggle competition. So Kaggle is a completely free website where essentially a community of data scientists come together to try and solve and build interesting machine learning models. So on this platform, so many data scientists will be sharing their code, which I find is a really, really great way for you to learn by looking at other people's code and trying to replicate it and build something yourself. So now that you've learned your skills and you've also practiced them, it's time to showcase these to a potential employer. So you want to build your portfolio and put your best foot forward as to why you deserve the job. Now, this is probably different depending on what stage of your career you are at. However, it all comes down to business impact. Remember that the more data science experience you have and the more impact your work has given to the business, the more likely you are to land a data science job. So if you've worked on real life projects before, whether that's within your internship or your research project, think about the business outcomes that this has resulted in. Um, a lot of people also like to use GitHub to document their code. This is sort of like a really big software development platform where people come together and share your code and you collaborate. Now, if you have no prior experience on working with real life problems, Think about your Kaggle competitions, talk about those that you've participated in and the results that you have obtained. I think in this stage, it's also really important to show your critical thinking to your employer or the hiring manager and show your desire to learn. Now, the last stage is to actually apply for the role. Now, this is again different depending on what stage of your career you are at. 
Um, I'm happy to do a more in-depth video catering to different pathways into data science but a few off the top of my head are, you know, you can you can go via a LinkedIn recruiter or headhunter where you essentially provide them your CV and they will go out and find roles for you. Um, another option is to get a job as a data analyst or any other role in a smaller company and then try to use your skills to try to create impact. I would also recommend you being friends with people in the data team as I think they are a very good resource to have. You can also speak to them about, you know, what data actually exists and they can let you know if there is an opening in their team and maybe you can possibly apply for that. Really, I think it's just important to show them that, you know, you have an ability to learn and you are very keen on continuing to hone your data science skills. So now that we've gotten to the end of this, I think that if you have all of these skills that we've covered, you are already better than 90% of the applicants out there. Now it's time to put your best foot forward and apply for the job that you want. Good luck. So that's all I have for a beginner's guide into data science. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out in one way or another. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.